Hey everybody, final thoughts, time for Tendrix. But before we begin, please keep in mind this is a paid premium. And with that out of the way, let's talk about this because let's face it, if you like Tetris, you're gonna like this game. You're gonna like this game. Yeah. It's it's analog Tetris. It is analog Tetris. And it's and it's turn-based instead of, you know, uh, real time, yeah. obviously. Uh, so I think there are definitely people that are gonna like really like that about Tetris. Tetris is stressful when it gets really fast. So yeah, that is something that I think uh, is gonna draw a lot of people in. Because yeah, who doesn't want to play turn-based Tetris? But this does, this isn't just Tetris. You definitely need to make that clear. This is not just, you know, a carbon copy of that game. There are some aspects of this that are definitely changing things up. Obviously, some of it is just translating it to a board game format. So, you know, instead of clearing lines, which you physically can't do, you have this little, you know, limit bar that goes up and down. Um, which I think is a clever way to mimic yeah. that uh, aspect of the game. It's like, because you are just, you know, expanding your your playing space when those lines get deleted. So, Absolutely. Yeah. And it also uh, changes things because you're used to lines disappearing, which then opens things up below it. But in this game, if you've got holes in your, you know, stack of tiles, yeah. they're going to be there. Yeah. You know, I've been able to fill in my space here, you know, and they go away. And then I could have exactly. you know, possibly dealt with you blocking <laughs> lines, but I can't in this game. And that's part of the strategy. Of it. Exactly. And then we're also hearing another big change is that sometimes this game is mean. Normally with, with Tetris, the game is mean at you. And this, uh, you are, you know, kind of... You're mean at each other. That's not always, but yeah. uh, a big part of this game is these effect tokens. So when you clear up uh, some of these spaces, you get these tokens and they give you special abilities. Some of them are helping you with your own board. Some of them are messing up other players' boards. And this is some fun strategy, but it is also usually going to be mean. Now, you can really mess up the plans of uh, <laughs> other people with these. Like, 100%. And like we saw in our gameplay. Yeah. Uh, now, I will say that I think... For that reason, I think this works pretty well as a two-player game because it's a very head-to-head -head yeah. kind of game. It, you get a mean token, you know who you're going to use it against. If your opponent gets a mean token, you know that's coming to you. And then no one is going, why is everyone ganging up on me? Exactly. Why, are, why do you keep doing it on me? It's like, well, I have to choose you. Yeah. You're the only other player here. So that definitely changes the dynamic of it. I think the dynamic of this game really changes between two players, three, three and four. I've played this at two and I've played it at four. Mm -hmm. I think... Personally, I like it a little bit better at two, um, but it, it has a different feel to it. So in a two-player, as you've seen, very head-to-head. -head. You know, you're, uh, like we just said, you're you're bashing heads against each other, and you're trying to mess them up as fast as you can. With four players, it can be a little bit more ponderous. It's a little bit more strategic of like, okay, I'm still doing the same thing on my board, but when I get effect tokens, who I use them on is a very important choice, because it's like, I can use this on one person, but they've got nothing I want to take, or they're in such a good position that it's not really gonna do anything. But then again, maybe that's why I should do it for mm. them. Because if I do it to someone else, that's gonna be really mean. They're gonna be out. And once they're out, they can't do anything else to affect oh, the yeah. leaders. So it, the strategy of it is a little bit more complex when you get into the higher player game. Mm. And it also lengthens the game a little bit. So it, it does have a different feel. Two player, very head to head, nice little quick duel. Player can be a bit more of a, like, not an afternoon game or something, but like it takes about an hour or something like that with a four-player uh, player count. Um, but let's talk about these effect tokens, because that, I think, is the biggest thing yeah. Yeah. with this game. So how do you feel about, I guess, in, in a way, the meanness of it? It's okay. In a game like this, I do not mind take that, mm. because that's, like, the point of the game. You know you're prepared to be messed up. Yeah. Uh, and... In, like I said before, because we're playing at two players, we know who... I can't be like, why does Shay keep targeting me? Well, duh, because I'm the only other player. And so for me in something like this, that's part of it. And you just kind of go with the flow knowing that it's going to be mean. And when I know a game is going to be mean, I don't feel so bad about it. That's part of the game. It's when the game doesn't have to be mean. And people yeah. just make yeah. it mean that I'm not a fan of Take That. Mm -hmm. So in this case, I think... It doesn't bother me at all. I don't know. What What do you think? I agree. I, I think that, especially like I said in the two-player, um, it just makes sense. It's just the right play. And because you're out so quickly, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it doesn't, I don't feel bad about it. In a four-player game, if someone's mean to you in the very beginning, you could get knocked out early and then you have to sit and watch while everyone else plays. That's no fun. But hopefully people are, are noticing that, like, it doesn't necessarily pay to knock someone out at, in the beginning of the game because, you know, then they can't do anything that would 
hinder your opponents. So I have found that it balances out. People don't tend to get knocked out super early. I feel like that's kind of part of the point of a... Uh... The, the locking tokens, right? Yeah, that's to try true. And yeah. keep people from uh, ganging up on someone three times in a row. Exactly, and that's another thing about this. Thank you for bringing that up. Which is that when you play uh, one of these tokens on someone, you lock them off, so they cannot be affected, you know, multiple times in a row, or at least they shouldn't be able to. The way that that is handled in this game uh, is not. I, I feel like it might be a little bit better if it was just the the token disappears at the beginning of your turn. Like if there's a token on your board beginning of your turn it goes away yeah. as it is right now it's at the beginning of the first player's turn all of the locks go away it seems like that might be a, a way for some things to be a little bit i don't know a, a little more a little more oily for some of the players depending on where you're sitting yeah uh, so i i personally would like it if it was just at the beginning of your turn if you've got a lock that one goes away um, but either way, I do think it is a helpful mechanism of like stopping someone from completely ganging up on you. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, at the very least, the fact that the locking mechanism is in there, I think is really good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's, the, that's mostly what we wanted to say. I mean, like I said at the beginning, if you like Tetris, you, you kind of know what you're going to get from this game. It's, it does have the extra pieces. Not, it's not just the, the normal four-piece tetrominoes. There's also the five and three pieces or five and three block uh, pieces. And I personally really like the additions of these. Yeah. Uh, I think- some more flexibility, especially because you aren't clearing the spaces on yeah. your board. You've got more flexibility to fill in some weird stuff because mm -hmm. you have these different shapes. Yeah, and I think these these three, these little three block pieces are great. You know, they're reliable. You're not gonna get in too much trouble with them. And then these five <laughs> block pieces. You're really messing up with that. <laughs> these. Oh, these plus signs are the bane of my existence. These are okay, these you guys. And then the uh, these chunky boys. They're pretty cool. These are friend-shaped. I love these guys. They're, they're pretty shaped. Yeah. They're, they're fantastic. So, yeah. So, that's what I, I think we've got to say. You know, if, if you're a fan of Tetris, if you like a tiling spatial puzzle game, and something with a little bit of take that, uh, then you should definitely uh, check out Tetris. And also, you should check out Paula Deming. Uh, Paula, why don't you tell uh, the folks where to check you out? the place i make the board game sketch comedy series things get dicey which you can find on youtube i'm also streaming games on twitch at twitch.tv slash paula deming and twitch.tv slash watch it played yeah. because i also contribute to the watch it played youtube channel you can see me there doing solo playthrough videos and top 10 lists so those are just a few of the places you can see me if you find me on twitter yeah. at paula deming you'll see a variety of other things that I do. She is the hardest working, hardest working woman in board games, believe me. <laughs> Fills her schedule the most. So there's Today. plenty of things to, to find uh, and enjoy, but thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me. And watching thank this. Thank you for watching, absolutely. So I will see you folks later. Bye bye. bye.